Fairview Baptist this morning. Nice, bright, smiling crowd this morning. Uh, if you'll take your Heavenly Highways hymns this morning and turn to hymn number six. Number six.
will be heard when we lay our eyes upon you and lay our eyes upon the heavenly square and all the beauties of heaven and knowing that we will be there with you through eternity. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Father, thank you for each one who came today. We just pray that we'll open our hearts and our minds to receive the message of the hour, what you are teaching us from your word. And then give us the ability, Lord, to apply it to our everyday lives. Father, there are many of our church family that's sick. Our prayer list is long. And we just lift each one of them up to you, Lord, and just ask that your will be done in their lives, and we'll praise you for it. Just comfort those, Lord, who've lost loved ones in the past weeks. We have members of our church who've lost uh, parents. So we just ask you to comfort them now. And we'll praise you for it. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come to your house today to proclaim your word. And I pray, God, that you give us the ability to apply it to our everyday lives. For it's in Jesus' most holy and wonderful name that I pray. Amen. <laughs> you can be seated. Take your hymnals, please. Turn to hymn number 51. We'll do the first, second, and fifth verse. Third, second, and fifth.
Let's pray. Father, we come to you at this moment that we were going to return a portion down to you if you've asked for. We just lift it up to you and just ask you to take it and use it, Lord, for the one of thy kingdom. For it's in Jesus' most holy and wonderful name that I pray. Amen. Amen.
keep you safe until the storm <coughs> passes by. You know, in the life of a pastor, you see many storms. In the lives of the people that you have been called to serve. And you know, sometimes we may be going through a storm ourselves. Or you see, we're not immune from the storms that we have in our lives. But also I have to be conscious of those that I'm serving that are walking through their storms. <coughs> of life. Here in the past few weeks I have seen families go through storm after storm after storm. And you try to minister to them. But when you get down to the bottom and that's what we're going to speak on today. While you're in the midst of the storm, as that song says, <laughs> Jesus passes by. You see, you may think that it doesn't affect me as a pastor when you're going through storms. But if you're any kind of pastor at all, when your people hurt, you hurt. All right. And so God led me over to Mark chapter 4. We'll be reading from verse 35 through verse 41. And speak on the subject of safety in the midst of the storm. Think about that. Safety in the midst of the storm. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. <clears throat> Verse 35 says, And the same day, when the evening was come, he said to them, Let's pass over unto the other side. That's a very important phrase in this passage. Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. Two things in that verse. He was in the ship. And the second thing is there were other little ships. Jesus was in the ship that I'm running on today. He wasn't in the little ships. And verse 37, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and they say unto him, Master, carry thou not that we perish? What a question to ask the Master who always cares for us. Jesus cares more for you than anyone else in this whole wide world. Amen. You'll never forget that. There's never a time that Jesus doesn't care for you. In verse 39, he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Jesus said, Why are you being afraid? Have you lost your faith? In verse 41, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The miracles that Jesus teaches us is that he has power over the realm of nature. Jesus Christ is a miracle 
person. A miracle working Savior. And this is a miracle that he performed when the disciples thought that they were going to go down in the midst of the storm. But you know what? In fact, God is coming storms somewhere every day of life. You see people every day as a pastor and, and you see them going through these storms and, and when they realize that the only one that can calm that storm is the Lord Jesus and see Him work in their lives. Amen. But when God performed that miracle in the Bible, it means it happened suddenly and also locally what He has always done on a larger scale. So when Jesus comes to storm on the sea, He does it immediately. Right on the spot. What He is doing in a larger scale everywhere. Now, when Jesus come the storm on the sea, <clears throat> he was teaching us some wonderful lessons about life. Maybe you are here this morning and uh, your life ship is going through a storm. It may be you've come to this church today and you have about decided that storm is more than you can take and you feel like you're going down. You feel like that your uh, life ship is going down. But I want you, I want to point out to you this morning that this wonderful miracle that Jesus had there has the power to calm, to calm the storms that are raging in your life today. Right. Now you may think, I thought about this life, you may think that Jesus doesn't care. Lord, I've been going through this storm and I've talked to you every day about calming this storm and you have not calmed it. Well, let me tell you something. He'll calm that storm at the right time. Amen. He cares for you. There are several lessons that can be talk from this passage, and I want to consider them with you today. First of all, is the journey of the ship. Look at verse 35 and 36. Here we're told that Jesus is on board the ship, and that's very important. You see, Jesus is on board of that ship. That's why he said, why have you lost faith? I'm here with you. You see, he didn't, he didn't say we're going to go out in the middle of the sea and we were going to go down. What did he say? He said, let's go on to the other side. Uh -huh. <laughs> Folks, that's something that's really pointed out in that passage of Scripture. Jesus said we're going to go on to the other side and I'm going to say more about that in just a moment. So they began to go and there were other little ships, he said. And life is often compared in the Bible in literature, to a voyage on the sea. The Apostle Paul compared life uh, to the voyage when he said, the time of my departure is at hand. You see, Paul was ready to go to the other side. You see, he knew what Jesus had said in Mark. He had studied that. And Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And when it came time for Paul to depart, he said, we're going to go to the other side. Paul also warns us that we are to be careful not to shipwreck our faith. In Acts chapter 27, Paul gives us a lengthy discussion of one of his voyages on the sea. And Bible teachers recognize that this scripture is not just a message about Paul's journey, but there is a lesson here about the voyage of life. A voyage that every single one of us we're on today. We see about life as a voyage on the sea. We see Jesus, Savior, pilot me over life's chance to sea. So in every, many ways, life is like a voyage on the sea. So, as you notice here, that the Bible tells us there were also with him other little ships. 
This teaches us that life is something all of us is sharing together. You see, we're in this life together. We're sharing it together. All of us are engaged in the journey of life. All of us have embarked on a voyage on the sea of time. But there is one major difference in this story between the other little ship and the ship which we are putting our attention on now. Jesus Christ was not in the little ship, but Jesus Christ was on this ship. And folks, if you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior today, Jesus Christ is on your ship. It may be tossed to and fro in the storm of life. But I want to tell you something. He's going to tell you one of these days, let's go over to the other side. And I thought about this. When we go to the other side, what are we going to be? We're going to have the destination of heaven that Jesus Christ is going to give us. We're going to walk on the streets of gold. We're going to sing in the heavenly choir. We're going to see Jesus Christ every day. We're going to see the apostles every day. We're going to see the glory of heaven every day. Let us pass on over to the other uh, side. That makes a great deal of difference in the Lord's of life. If Christ is in your life, if you have brought Jesus on board of your life, then that makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for people that I see who are trying to battle these storms in their lives that do not know Jesus as their personal Savior. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you, folks, you can't battle that, that, that storm because that storm is going to tear you down. You're going to sink. And I think that is something that, that we pastors and, and evangelists need to take this story about Jesus coming the storm and telling the people who are fighting the storms of life and they're fighting them today that Jesus Christ can come that storm if you'll let him board your ship. Amen. Jesus Christ comes on board of your ship of life when you receive Him as Lord and Savior. You knew that don't get to that, did you? Mm -hmm. Now, when you have Jesus Christ on your ship of life, it means two things. Look at verse 35. Verse 45, when Jesus stepped aboard of the ship, said, let us pass over unto the other side. What is that doing? Giving you direction. Let that word stand out to you. Giving you a, a direction. Jesus stepped on board as the master of that ship. And this means he gives to us life's guidance and life's de de destination. Now, if you do not know Christ or have been on board, then of course your life in many ways is like a ship on the sea, tossed to and fro, having neither chart or compass, driven aimlessly along in life over the waves and oceans of life with no purpose or sense of direction. If you do not have Christ in your life, you don't know where you're going. If you're here today and you are lost, you don't know where you're going. Well, yeah, you do. I'll tell you right now, you're going to hell. There's a word that's lost in our vocabulary. Just last Sunday, a man walked out of the church here last Sunday and he said, You know what, preacher? He said, You don't hear about hell once in churches anymore. Robert, would you stand there with me today when that said? And I said, well, I remember preaching on a whole sermon on hell not too long ago. This is really all, but hell is real. And people are dying every day and going to hell, and we're in our churches are allowed them to go to hell because we do not take the gospel to them. You know why? Because we're not hearing the gospel in the church. But not only does having Jesus on board your ship of life bring direction, but it also brings direction. Now, there's two words. The second one is direction. And the second one is destination. I misspoke that. Direction, destination. So, 
Notice carefully what Jesus said in verse 35. I'm, I'm saying it over and over again. Let us pass over to the other side. There is destination. Jesus Christ has picked out our destination and he says we're going to go on to the other side. You may be fighting a battle here. That storm may be raging here. But let me tell you something. When Jesus Christ comes, he's going to say, come up here and let's go over to the other oh, side. God. Where there's peace, where there's joy, where there's tranquility, where you're with God for every day. And asking him questions if you don't understand here now. Singing in the old gospel choir. And I can't help. I wake up. We'll get that, we'll get that old, uh, old gospel choir, that whole heavenly choir around the, around the throne of God. And I'm going to be singing up there with my chest come out. Just like some of you are that can sing here, I'm going to sing to my height of my voice and as loud as I can sing because I'm over on the other side. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Say, preacher, I thought you were Baptist. I am. I'm not Baptist. 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 You know what? It's time that we have to get a little bit excited. Amen. You know why? And I've said this all here in my ministry, down through the years. You're going to find we Baptists over here in the corner of Glory Land, and we're going to be sitting over there shaking in our boots, while all those other people that's praised God down through the years are going to be shouting, and we're going to be scared to death because we don't know what the world's going on. <laughs> and we say, what's wrong with those people over there, Jesus? He said, they're home. On the other side. Oh, God. <laughs> Home on the other side. Praise God. Let me move on. You know what? <laughs> we talk about the perseverance of the saints, but I don't believe in the perseverance of the saints as much as I do in the perseverance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. Good Jesus Christ is the basis of our assurance. We are not kept by our own strength. We are not kept by our own power. But the Bible says we are kept by the power of God until the last days. We can stand those storms that come into our lives because of the power that God will give you to sustain those storms. And there's another word. Security. It means two things. It means we are in Jesus and Jesus is in us. The twofold re a re relationship is the basis of our assurance that one day we're going to make it to heaven. Right. Not because of us, but because of what Christ did on the Calvary's cross. Right. Yeah. Okay. Last Sunday we celebrated the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Folks, he's alive. All right. He's alive. All right. And one of these days, here it comes again. We're going to go over to the other side. And Jesus says, come up here. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And if we're the ones walking around, let me tell you something. We're going to be walking there for a while. And all of a sudden, up we'll go. And we'll make them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Because what? We're on the other side. Amen. You know, Noah. <laughs> Noah's voyage in the Bible is a picture of safety. Noah got on that old gospel ship, and that was an ark. I call it the gospel ship. Mm -hmm. And he got in quite a mess. He got in quite a storm, folks. I'm telling you, the greatest flood the world had ever known at that time came. And don't you imagine that old ship, that old ark was going to and fro. Have you ever been on these cruises and get in a storm and, and you're walking like this and you almost fall down? And I guess some people do fall down. Don't you think as that ship was rocking to and fro, that ark rocking to and fro, that old Noah fell down? But let me tell you something, he didn't fall out of it. He right. fell in it. And folks, if you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, what <clears throat> When the storms come upon you, you're not going to fall out. You're going to fall in. Why? Go on the other side. Let's go there. Amen. Amen. This passage teaches us Jesus is in us. And Jesus' presence in our life's boat is the assurance of our final destination. 
The Bible says Jesus is like an anchor for the soul. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. You see, Jesus, our anchor, is always safe. What? On the other side. I mean, you, you're not going to forget that. <laughs> on the other side. Hey, let us pass on the other side. There you go. <laughs> you know what? He's already anchored safely in the harbor. And our relationship with Jesus is the assurance of our final destination. So the first lesson we learn here is the journey of the ship. Then secondly, I'm not getting through with this message this morning. Is the anxiety of the storm. Look at verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind. You know, that is so true in life. Some of you could say that today. Notice there arose a great storm of wind. The journey of life often encounters many storms. The life of the believer the life of the lost person, our storm is always going to be calm. <coughs> the life of the lost person, nobody will calm your storm until you give Jesus your life. So there are those north winds of death and there are the east winds of difficulty that come into our lives. And sometimes we're in the midst of the anxiety of the storm. So I want you to learn some things about the anxiety of the storm. One is, notice, the storm came suddenly. Verse 37, there arose a great storm of wind. The, the, these were experienced sailors now that were sailing this ship. They never would have gone on the Sea of Galilee had they suspected they would not have encountered, encountered the storm. But you see, the Sea of Galilee is very susceptible uh, to the storm. The Sea of Galilee is located, that says, in a basin-like area with mountains around with deep valleys, and these deep valleys become like great funnels that bring in the cold air down to the Sea of Galilee. So Galilee is susceptible uh, to sudden storms. And friend, let me tell you something. This was a great thunderstorm. This was a big storm. Now, we've had thunderstorms all past week, and, and, and I tell you what, uh, well, that's my television. Not electric, not electrical, but the weather men. They think that if a storm is coming and it's a, and it's a thunderstorm, they take that to, uh, to heart and they take over the television. You don't see anything else. And the thing about it is, they say the same thing over and over and over again. And I sit there and I talk back at them. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> Had nothing to do with my message. You're going to move on now. <laughs> Have you noticed what the passion of one day will do? Proverbs 27 1 tells us, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. In one day, we can plunge into a great crisis. Any one of us. May get a telephone call and be in with great sorrow. Just one visit to the doctor office, we will find ourselves in the midst of a great storm. And oh, how suddenly the storm of life can come to those of us who walk in the world. Being a Christian does not make you immune from the storm. The Bible says God makes the rain fall on the just and the unjust. Let me ask you something. Have you ever wondered why the storms come? and what the cause of storms are. Well, there are three basic reasons for storms. Now, I'm not to close it. Now, listen to this. We cause the storms ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are responsible for some of the storm because what? Disobedience. Well, that's a bad place. Yeah. You remember what the Bible says about Jonah? The old pouting prophet? God commanded old Jonah to go to Nineveh, and Jonah disobeyed and went to Tarsus so far in the opposite direction as God told him to go. 
And the Bible says when he got out on the sea and board that ship, it says there rose a mighty tempest. Well, you may be going through a storm today, and it may be a cause of your own disobedience. Then there are some storms that God allows for the purpose of discipline. John 6 tells us of the storm and how while the disciples were out on the sea, Jesus was up on, on the mountain praying for them. And the purpose of the storm was what? To draw them closer to him. Mm -hmm. Psalm 83, 15 says, The Lord makes them afraid with the storm. God's in the storm. Sometimes God uses the storm as the only way to get our attention. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. He will get your attention. All right. All right. One yeah. way or another, He will. Right. I will. Yeah. He's got my attention right. many, many right. times. Sometimes when the wind blows and the bellows overcome us, God is in that storm to bring us closer to Him. So, some storms come because of the purpose of this. And secondly, some storms are satanic in order. Now, listen to this. Some storms are demonic. Notice the wording in these verses. We are told in verse 39, Jesus rebuked the storm. Mm -hmm. it, is in the, it, it is the same Greek word Jesus used in rebuking the demonic that, he, that inhibited the man. Also notice when Jesus says, Peace, be still. You could translate that, Hush. Be muzzled. All right. It is as if Jesus were talking to a wild maniac that needed to be bound and gagged. So some have suggested that the deep is the abode of the fallen spirits, but that is not, we do not know hard times has been because of sin. There will be no storms, no floods, no tornadoes, no hurricanes. So we may be going through a storm that is demonic in nature, and storms come suddenly. But in third, the storm of life also comes severely. It looked as if this ship was going down. The verses were the, the waves were beating against the ship. It was in danger of being torn apart. And these disciples who were well versed in steamship, which was their trade, were extremely afraid, the Bible says. Listen, when you have trained sailors afraid, you have an extremely bad storm. There are some storms that come in life that make you a stronger person. So I'm going to close. I'll finish this message tonight. You'll have to come back. Some of you may be going through that old storm of sin today. Until you give your life to Jesus, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So we have learned the lesson of the anxiety in the storm. Listen, Jesus is almost ready to say, let's move on to the other side. Folks, if you're here lost today, you're going to be left behind. That concerns me as a pastor. That concerns me as a preacher of the gospel. I don't want to see anyone left behind. God doesn't want to see anyone left behind. But unless you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be well, this is a whole other sermon that you're going to be facing the tribulation. Well, that, which is worse than I could ever describe in the English language. I can just tell you, you don't. Be here. Well, that, Father, God, thank you for this message. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray this morning, fill me, guide me, direct me, and God, you have. I couldn't have done it without you, Lord. You're the one that gives me the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom that I need to proclaim the message that you lay upon our hearts. Lord, you place this upon my heart because some of our church family are going through 
bad storms in your life. And I pray, Lord, if I haven't heard anything else, there's a, there's a, you calm the storm in the disciples' world. You can calm the storm. Thank you.